In this video, I'll show you how to give your work a professional feel by setting up with the right size, print ready margins, and of course, bleed. Stay to the end where we'll go step by step and set up a chapter in Clip Studio EX. If you're preparing your manga for competition and anthology or just print in general, it's essential to set your pages up correctly before you spend hours or days drawing. Japanese awards are particularly bad for explaining how to set this up. It may be the language barrier and the translator or Google AI not understanding what is being said, but also these are publishers speaking to publishers, or they think they're speaking to publishers, when really it's just us noobs and we have no idea what they're talking about. In short, it's explained horrifically, or not at all. There was one, uh, one competition I remember said, Trim to the trim line, draw to the edge, not to the spine, sit in the box, or go to the edge. No in between. Or, size, bleed, margins, and safe zone. If you're familiar with printing, this is a fairly easy instruction, but if you've never had to do it, you're like, what? What is this? But I've seen it go wrong so many times, especially bleed. Size matters. It may seem obvious, but all your pages need to be the same size and the same DPI. What is DPI? We'll go over that. The final print size of your volume varies by style and a little bit by country. I recommend doing a little research and seeing what size works for you. In Japan, there are about four common book sizes to choose from. Uh, A6 or four by six inches, mostly used for light novel. Ko Bibon or four and a half by seven inches. The preferred size for mass market manga, JIS B6, which is the Japanese industrial standard, or five by seven and a quarter inches. A mid-size manga format used for upscale and quality manga. Special editions of popular manga often go on to be published in A5 or five and three quarters by eight and a quarter inches. In the States, book sizes are slightly different and tend to be a little larger. Some common US book sizes include pocket book size, which is really close to that bunko size, or four and a quarter by just under seven inches. YA general fiction is about five by seven. Tokyo pop size is slightly larger than many manga sizes. The one size that you can find in both is A5, or five and three quarters by eight and a quarter. Five and a half by eight and a half. And actually the most common is six by nine. The two sizes that I found correlate the most between the two countries is pocketbook size, which is just a little smaller than the bunko size. At eight and a quarter and five and three quarters, you have A5, which actually translates the same in both countries. And in manga, you'll find this in special editions or limited releases of popular manga. I like it because it's a little wider and allows a lot more space for our really wide words. In the end, if you're working with a private printer, double check with them what size they recommend and what the pricing is for the different sizes that they offer. But if budget is an issue, it may be cheaper to go with the narrower size because with the narrower size, it fits better on the paper as it's printed. I found that A5 with a private printer can be more expensive because it's considered oversized and not as many fit. Manuscript paper tends to be a lot bigger than your book and has to be shrunk down. The most common size for manga is B4 for professionals. And for doujinshi, it's A4, like an average paper size, eight and a half by 11. The ratio of this paper shrinks down really well to the size of your book. After experimenting, and now that I work digitally, my canvas isn't the size of manuscript paper. I actually make it book size plus bleed, and this way I'm not enticed to zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom and create lots of tiny detail that no one will ever see. All it does is take time. This also helps me with the font size, because trying to navigate shrinking down from a larger DPI, larger size canvas, down into book size, and getting the fonts the right size was really confusing for me. I, I'm able to just put it in at six and a half, six to ten point font is a industry standard and what you're likely to see in novels. So what is DPI? We've mentioned it a couple of times. DPI stands for dot per inch and this is specifically for printing but because printing has turned digital we've carried it over and now we use it when setting up digital pages too. It's a way of measuring 
the resolution or the amount of detail in a printed image. Literally the maximum amount of ink droplets a printer deposits in one square inch of that image. The higher the density of dots, so three to 600 dots or more, the higher the resolution and the more information in the image. Likewise, the lower DPI, so 72, gives a lot less information, a lot less dots, and it's gonna, as you try to make it larger, it's gonna get really fuzzy and look pixelated and terrible. As you try to print a tiny image, those dots are spread out and the image looks really fuzzy. 300 is the average for printing, but in monochrome or black only, not grayscale, you can print in 600 DPI. Many competitions ask for six. Bleed. This one is really important and the one that gets messed up the most. I have a close friend who's a printer and it's always bleed. When setting up your page for print, the most significant difference between digital and print is bleed. What is bleed? It's a sacrificial allowance on the outside of the page that will be cropped off when the book is cut. Book cropping machines, like all machines, aren't exact and they need a little wiggle room to cut the page wrong. If you have a full bleed page, which means your art goes completely to the outside, you don't want weird white lines and discrepancies in the image, so you give extra space where it can cut it wrong and no one will know. The area is supposed to be cut off, so if it cuts wrong, in theory, you'll still have a nice clean edge. As an example, see how this black goes all the way to the edge? That would be considered full bleed. If I didn't do it all the way out, you would have a weird, you might have like weird white lines here. See how this panel is inset a little bit? That wouldn't be full bleed. This would be to the edge of the margin. When you're working with a printer, double check with them how much bleed they want. The printer I work with prefers three millimeters, so I make sure to add that around every edge. It's easier to fill the space while you're working on the panel and naturally extend the background of the image rather than having to go back and try to fix a drawing or shrink it down and then add the outside to, and add more detail to it. Some printers only want bleed on the three outer edges. So one, two, three, and not the spine. Some printers want all four with bleed so they can cut off the spine themselves. Check before submitting your files and don't make them add it for you. Moving in from bleed, we have the outer margin. If this was a novel, See this empty area all around the text? That's your outer margin. No text goes in the outer margin, not even in a manga. While not as expendable as the bleed area, this area still is at risk of being cropped or glued in. When you do a spread, it's generally good practice to leave the center margin blank, but sometimes you wanna do a nice flashy spread and do something really impactful. Make sure whatever you're drawing in the center margins is not important. Don't put text there, don't put faces there, because no one will see it. It's gonna be glued in and it's gonna disappear into the spine. If you put the most part of your impactful, if you put the most part of your impactful, if you put the most part of your impactful, if you put the most impactful part of your image in the two center margins, it's just going to disappear into the margin, into the glue. No one's going to see it. Digitally, this doesn't matter because everything is flat. But when you start working in books, you have to take this into account. So when you're planning your composition, draw there, but don't put anything important. The innermost box, so again in our novel, where the text would be, is the safe zone. You can put whatever you want here text, faces, important information. At first, it feels like a weirdly small area and having a full bleed page makes it feel even smaller. Like if you have a blank page and you're placing your bubble so you know where the speech is gonna go. If you're careful, your text can bump up against this line, but don't get over adventurous and put it in the side margins and risk losing your text. The text and faces are really important for conveying your story and your emotions. So you want them safely in the middle where your audience is gonna be able to read them. Don't lose them to the maw of the cutting machine or the abyss of the center spine. I use CSPEX mostly for the story mode, but the individual page setup should be the same on the other versions. If you make a lot of manga, I highly recommend EX for story mode, if nothing else. So new page, comic, title your manga, pick a folder for it to save to, select a trim preset. I'm going with A5. 
add bleed. It automatically adds five. I use three millimeters. Choose your DPI. I prefer 300. You can go with 600. It's automatically at 350, so I'll have to change that later. I work in grayscale, but monochrome is a good choice for tones also. Check the multiple pages box. Select your chapter length. I use 20 pages. For manga, your binding or spine will be on the right. For comics or American graphic novels, select the left binding. Then, are you starting with a single page or spread? Right for spread, left for single page. You can add a cover page if you'd like. I find it annoying. Same with the page numbers, but feel free to use them. There is even a box for recording a time lapse. This can be fun for social media and videos. If you'd like to, go ahead and select that. When you're ready, press OK, and all 20 pages will be set up for you. One last thing I like doing is form the spreads. Spreads are far more impactful in physical books than in digital or scroll on the phone, so, and it's fun to play with. Right-click on the page and select Combine Pages. Now your chapter is ready for drawing. I used to use paper, so I like making my own panels, but CSP has a handy tool for making panels into separate layers. If you work traditionally and want to import your pages, copy-paste each page and reduce them to fit. Or open the first page, go to Story, click Import Pages, select the rest of your pages and let them load. To go back and change the resolution, I go to File, Batch Process, Edit, Canvas Properties, and I'll change it to 300. an extra tidbit for traditional artists. In the Layer Properties tab, change your page to gray or monochrome, up the contrast to make sure the image is black and white, select Color Gamut, select the white area, and hit Delete. Right-click on Layers, New Layer, Paper. Now, when you're ready to tone, set your line art layer to Reference, Hit the little lighthouse symbol, and you'll be able to use the paint bucket for toning. It saves a lot of time and messing about. And then, if you're wanting to tone your entire character in a single panel, you can select the entire panel, fill it, and then just delete the unwanted portions. If you want to go on and publish your manga, check out this video where I go over the process so you can make sure your manuscript is ready to print.